Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm here with my CNC long mill and I wanted to do a short video on um, milling aluminum. And uh, I'm just gonna take you through where I started with no knowledge and um, after just two short jobs, I've got a little bit of a better grasp on what the machine is capable of and what exactly the feeds and speeds need to be for me to get the best cut. All right guys, getting started on this topic. So everything I'm gonna reference as far as cutting tools is gonna to be CNC Labs. I purchased it directly from them. Uh, some when I purchased my machine, some later. Uh, but it's all their tools. Um, I don't know where they got them, but I got them from them. So I've used both uh, the 1 8 inch flat and uh, the ball nose, the rounded end mills. I've used the upcut uh, quarter inch end mill. And um, all my feeds and speeds are basically gonna be in relation to these tools. And uh, I'll be more specific when we get a little further on in the topic, but um, the job. So what's the job? I had a, I had a gentleman approach me uh, via email about making a, a turbine mount um, of some sort for a JetCat PHT3 helicopter turbine. And if you guys um, have been watching my channel for a little bit, you know, most all my content is going to be uh, CNC, um, electronics, prototyping a little bit, uh, but mostly uh, remote control aircraft related content uh, some cars there's some different things in there uh, I, I have a, access to a copy of SolidWorks that I use for everything here and then I import it all into um, post processor sheet cam and um, the drawing file will go into sheet cam and that's where I make my tool paths today I just want to talk about this so what I've got here is that each each of these pieces of aluminum here started out as um, I think it's maybe five and a half by six inches um, length and uh, it's quarter inch thick. When it comes to cutting aluminum with this machine, the very first thing you're going you're gonna to hear a lot of people, especially machinists or anybody that has a machining background, they're going to talk about rigidity. Uh, they're going to see 3D printed parts and, and things like that and they think, oh, it can't do it. But as a matter of fact, it actually can. It, it can very much cut through aluminum and at speeds that I was really pleased with. Uh, when, I, when I started out, I went to CNC's uh, forums, their website, and uh, what I found there turned out to be a 1200 millimeter per minute feed rate, um, 100 millimeters on the plunge with a 0.2 step over and um, running this Makita router uh, between two two and a half, maybe three on the speed. I'm not exactly sure what RPM that is. You guys, you can look it up if you're interested. But, uh, and then when I started taking bites, I was taking uh, one fifth of a millimeter. So 0.2 millimeters. And the very first thing that happened to me, it sounded like the machine was gonna come apart. It was loud. <laughs> Nothing broke, but it was very loud and it didn't sound like the, it just didn't, didn't sound like the chip loading was, was correct. Um, so what I ended up doing is I backed that feed speed down to uh, 50%, so 600 millimeters per minute uh, feed rate. And I left the, um, the Makita router at the same speed. And uh, I'll put a picture or a video up here in just a second and, and you can see my first attempt The finish, as it was machining down into the stock, the finish was actually uh, not bad. It, it, it was almost like a mirror finish. The chip loading was good. There was a huge mess. I mean, I really had to stay on it with my shop back to, to keep the mess down and, and all the, the aluminum chips from getting all over, all over my shop area here. But um, one of the very first things I noticed was that the finished surface, the vertical surface, that I machined out 
uh, it wasn't shiny. It wasn't shiny and it wasn't smooth and it almost gave, gives off like um, what looks like a cast texture and it's not, it's just extruded aluminum. So uh, one of the other issues I ran into was I started with a, um, I started with a flat end mill and then went uh, went into a ball end mill just, just to see what the differences would be there. And um, I don't know if I lost part of my XY offset or what, but there's a clear line around this first part about halfway through and that's about where I changed the bit that it just it, it didn't line up so I, you know I'm, I'm still going to send this part to the to the guy that asked for it but I, I did want to make a second attempt like, like this was a practice run right so just just to see what the machine can do and and what's the best way to set the machine up in the future so um, plunging holes it did great the bit that did work better for me is the uh, was the flat flat end mill um, the, the ball nose bit did want to walk on me, even with the lightest um, starting depths. And, and that may be something with me based on um, my limited experience with the tool paths and stuff. But uh, the flat end mill worked far better. And I did break um, two, I may have broke all of them, I can't even remember now, of the bits because uh, my table was not level and it was taking a larger bite out um, as it went around, especially the inside here when I cut the first of these, of these discs out. And uh, still everything was at 600 millimeters per minute on the feed rate, uh, point, point 0.2 step over, uh, 0.2 millimeters depth of cut and um, this being the first attempt probably took me close to uh, I'd say probably two two and a half maybe three hours and most of that was due to the uh, post processor I was using um, I, I had not at that point purchased the license yet and there was a g-code limit of like 180 lines and I didn't want to purchase it until I was sure that it worked. And now that I know it does work, uh, I'm very happy with my my selection of post processor, which is sheet cam. Uh, if you guys didn't catch that earlier, uh, but I knew when I cut the second piece out, I wanted to I wanted to use the quarter inch the quarter inch end mill because if if you're doing this for any type of monetary gain and you're not just doing it for hobbies or presents or whatever i can't be breaking bits right i mean you're lucky that these cnc bits from um from cnc huh, have uh they're like three bucks right so you get like a for eleven dollars us you get like three of these so uh but you still don't want to break them let's go to the second the second attempt at this so go and second attempt everything was done the same way nothing's really changed and uh again i'll put a couple videos or a picture or something up uh, but but this surface and i don't know if you can see it in this video this surface is, is almost mirror finish i mean it is fantastic I'm really happy with the way it turned out and I attribute that to this trial run on this first part so basically um, with the quarter inch bit um, I used a feed rate of 300 millimeters per minute and that is just arbitrary I didn't read that anywhere I just said you know what 600 worked on the eighth inch it's a bigger bit let's cut the feed rate down and then using UGS as my software, I can speed the feed rate up in the middle of the job or slow it down as I see fit. Um, I did change the plunge rate since it's a larger bit to 25 millimeters per minute from 100. And um, 
that really didn't make much of a difference. I, you know, when I, I ended up speeding it up, but using the same files, the same cut, cut paths and everything, only using the quarter inch bit, uh, I ended up running 140% um, about halfway through my job. And then I do remember that, I, I don't have a note here, but I remember that I did bump it back up to, to about 180%. So running an upcut quarter inch end mill from CNC, um, I was running basically 600, about 580 millimeters per minute with a, uh, with a depth of cut. All these depths of cuts have been 0.2 millimeters. I don't know if it was luck or if it was just my experience, but this part came out much, much, much better. Um, and I'm really happy with it. The only thing I did use a different, um, I used the eighth inch flat end mill for these holes here. But other than that, everything else was cut with a quarter inch up cut end mill. And the inside and the outside have this fantastic um, mirror finish on it. And I just, I couldn't be happier. The, sec the second attempt to make it the part, same part, both of these are, are, are basically the same other than the machining differences because of my trial and error. This second part I made in just under one hour. And most of that was machine setup and running the G-code, right? So I'd say as far as running G-code, it probably was close to 40, 42, maybe 45 minutes worth of uh, G-code. And the other five, six, eight minutes was me changing from the 1 8 inch end mill to the quarter inch end mill, resetting my zeros uh, and all that kind of stuff. My opinion, um, and it is only my opinion, so if you're going to try to start cutting aluminum, I, I would not, I would not cut anything harder than aluminum. I wouldn't cut anything, any other metal harder than aluminum. These bits worked, worked great. You get the chip loading, right? Everything stayed nice and cool. Nothing got hot. Um, I, I, if you're going to use a quarter inch end mill, whether it's up cut or down cut, I think I would start with 300 millimeters per minute, um, 0.2 on the step over depending on if you're just cutting contours like I have here or if you're doing 3D cuts, you, you may want to try something different. Um, and and then just you, whatever software you're using to send the G-code, just speed that up or slow it down based on um, your chip loading or, or, or what you think the machine's capable of. I, if I don't have a, a enclosure or anything built around this so really the only problem I have is is uh, is a mess the sound is really not too loud um, so I was I was basically trying to contain the mess more than I was um, trying to cut the part out as fast as possible for everything that I've asked for, of this machine for this specific job I'm pretty happy with it so again I, I would start with 300 millimeters per minute on a quarter inch bit um, the Makita is still running at about two, two and a half, maybe three um, on the speed dial and uh, 0.2 step over. And I would take anywhere, if you're, if you're nervous about it, you know, if you're, if you're not sure if your table's perfectly level, um, maybe start with a 10th of a millimeter depth of cut. And then um, I settled on 0.2 millimeters and I was really happy with that this week. If you're, if you're thinking about cutting some aluminum, uh, this machine can do it and uh, you, you should not be, um, you should be cautious, but you should not uh, be hesitant to give it a try. So uh, that's all I've got. If, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, um, like, share, and subscribe, and um, maybe we'll have some more uh, 
CNC router content coming in the future. So thanks guys.